Montreal, Canada. Its 3.5 million inhabitants are used to extremely severe winters. They have no choice, as bitterly cold temperatures and heavy snowfalls of as much as 15 inches at a time vary the city. This city knows bad weather. But there is one kind of winter storm that is the toughest to beat, the ice storm. So Montreal has got its first forecast of freezing rain. This is all ice. This is absolutely surreal. Look at this. Holy crap. Wow. Everything just gets covered in a centimeter thick layer of ice. I went way further than I expected. Whoa. That is too satisfying. I'm never going to get sick of that. Ice storms are created by atmospheric circumstances that are so unique they seem impossible. Unlike New York, just 300 miles to the south, Montreal gets hit by freezing rain an average of 10 days per year. The reasons are location and geography. When warm air from the south meets cold northern air, this creates the ideal conditions above Montreal for extreme winter weather. And because Montreal lies in the midst of the St. Lawrence River Valley, the situation is intensified. As this warm air from the south rides up over the surrounding mountains, it traps the cold polar air in the valley below. As the warm air rises, it releases rain, which falls through the cold layer. The perfect amount of cold air then supercools the rain, causing it to be cold enough to freeze the moment it hits the ground. The longer these conditions remain, the more severe the weather becomes. So if the perfect ice storm were to strike, it would begin on a January day in the skies above Montreal. It's just surreal, like the entire city just coated with ice. This is honestly so much fun. Ice storms are not unusual in Canada, coating the landscape with a beautiful shroud of ice. Ice formation generally ranges from a trace to one inch in accumulation. But in January 1998, Canada was hit by a storm that was anything but usual. In 1998, Montreal suffered the most disastrous, tragic, and expensive ice storm in recorded history. Even for people who grew up in Canada, in the eastern part of the country, where winter they take pretty much for granted, have never seen anything quite like this. The damage here is staggering. Well, Montreal seems like a city truly under siege tonight as thousands of troops move in on a mission of mercy. In Quebec alone, more than one million households, that's up to about three million people, left without electricity. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I never would imagine that something like this could happen. I'm freaking out. The 98 ice storm was Canada's worst natural disaster, affecting over 5.4 million people, or one-fifth of the country's population. Virtually no one east of Ottawa has power tonight. The storm blanketed an area larger than the state of Florida, 120 miles by 600 miles. This is the largest storm event in NYSEG's history. We suffered damage to our electric lines to the tune of about 1,850 miles. One of our engineers equated to a trip from here to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Over five days, multiple layers of ice built up because of the relentless freezing rain that weighed down everything it touched. During the ice storm in a five-day period, we had 80 hours of freezing rain that produced 100 millimeters of ice. That's a lot of ice all at one time. Eventually, the city's infrastructure began to collapse. When you saw electrical pylon suddenly buckle in front of your eyes, you knew right away this was going to be major, major problems. It's a total write-off. I mean, we're not talking a repair job. It's a total rebuild. Four million people lost power. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. A devastating scene across the Champlain Valley and beyond. Thick ice, more than three inches in some spots, coating everything. Over 17 million acres of forest were damaged in northern New England and upstate New York. Some trees carried 40 times their weight in ice. And across the border, they were devastated. Montreal got hit hard. Montrealers were burning the wood uh, off their front porches and fireplaces in some cases that hadn't been used for 50 yep. years. <laughs> and we saw an incredible sight, uh, these huge power lines that people see driving from the border north Very to Montreal, just absolutely bent uh, right amazing over. sight. And Quebec stayed that way for quite a while. After the storm, 3,000 kilometers of power lines were destroyed at a cost of over $800 million. 
The economic impact of the storm has been devastating. Insurance companies now estimate they'll pay homeowners $500 million to repair their property, making this the most expensive natural disaster in Canadian history. of snapping branches and power lines, something that few will ever forget. We could hear the trees crashing, and it sounded like thunder. Some sounded like gunshot. We could hear them just crunching and crashing and going down. We, my wife and I just sat there, and we didn't know what to do. In Pakenham, west of Ottawa, listen and you'll hear a forest dying. <laughs> Like gunfire, the sound of maples falling. This is really uh, oh. tough to see. Oh, it's awful. Shirley Fulton's family has been running this sugar bush for 150 years. You shouldn't be able to see the sky here. It'll take 40 or 50 years for the bush to recover. Meteorologists have called the storm a hundred year event, but what many people don't realize is that it may take that long for our forests to recover. Mother Nature um, doesn't really make rational choices. It can hit anywhere and affect anyone and kill people, injure people, ruin livelihoods without you know the blink of an eye. You really, really appreciate the, uh, the power of, of nature and the, and the power of weather. And ultimately, no matter how much technology we have, no matter how equipped we are, no matter how prepared we are, people will always be profoundly affected by weather. Days out from a storm, it's hard to predict exactly what'll happen. But in early January 1998, we saw dangerous conditions headed our way. This is rain. This is rain that means business. And we knew it was going to be bad. You're going to have a major icing problem. The, the way it visited itself upon us, it creeped in. It was a couple of days of just that little, January little, 4th, little uh, bit of 1998. rain, little bit, almost mist. Yeah. It was just this slow, silent build up until we realized that we were in deep trouble. It was Monday, January 5th, 1998. Quebecers were going back to school and work after the holidays. It wasn't a very nice day. Too much ice. The ice is terrible all over the place. Dave Bronstetter, this is Daybreak on CBC Radio 1940 in Montreal. If you do not have to go out, do not. Unless it is absolutely necessary, stay home. Highways become skating rinks, and back roads, bobsled runs. Almost 15,000 trees in Montreal are broken or down. Dozens of streets are closed. Power lines ripped to the ground. Homes and cars damaged. As I walked up, I said, oh, lucky me, the back windshield has no ice on it. And I got a little closer to find out that I didn't have a back windshield. I don't have much of a front windshield. The city tries to clean up the mess. Mother Nature keeps making the mess bigger. The worst neighborhood are uh, definitely uh, NDG, Maisonneuve, and Rosemont. Late that afternoon, the city opens two shelters for people who have no power and need help. Then, the real power of the storm hits during the afternoon. So much ice fell that eight high-voltage power lines crumbled like toothpicks. Their cables strewn across a busy highway near Drummondville. Hydro workers have never seen it so bad. About 400,000 homes are without electricity. More than 600 crews are working to restore power. Here's a look at the area affected by the storm, a region that stretches from in and around Ottawa to Montreal and up the south shore of the St. Lawrence. We haven't seen anything remotely like this uh, since about February of 1961. We got about 50 millimeters worth of ice today. 
We're getting there. We have about 18 millimeters on the ground, on the cars, on the trees. Darren Solomon, our reporter, is outside right now to fill us in with some more information. Darren, what's the latest Hydro says about how many customers are without power? In all of Quebec, 755,000 homes without electricity. In Montreal, on the island, we're talking about nearly 250,000 homes. Does Hydro have any new estimate about when people will be getting their power back? They still say it could take about three or four days. The forecast for that night and for the next day, Tuesday, January 6th, was for freezing rain. But that forecast didn't say four days of freezing rain. It didn't say the ice storm of the century that's going to turn your lives upside down. But that's what we got. This is a look back when the triangle of darkness descended on the south shore and when the ring of power around Montreal broke down. This is day two of the ice storm crisis in Montreal. The freezing rain has started again. There are still half a million homes in the southern part of Quebec that do not have electricity. Command Central at Hydro-Quebec. Workers have been dispatching crews around the clock, trying to deal with one of the biggest blackouts in Quebec history. So the branches are falling all over the place. They're breaking the wires. We're putting them back up two hours after uh, alarms go off, and it just went down again. Hydro wasn't the only outfit on the road. The city's crews were scrambling to stay on top of the mess. Across town, several apartments were evacuated. People had used propane-powered generators to stay warm and ended up poisoned by carbon monoxide fumes. Everyone told Montrealers to keep off the streets. More shelters open for people without electricity. Do you want a soup, ma'am? After an emergency cabinet meeting in Quebec, the Premier issued a warning. I think that we must tell the population that they should not hesitate to leave home if they feel like it. Those who tried to tough it out at home, some people's problems only got worse. This man's house caught fire after using his fireplace for two days straight. Hey, you know, it's going to go down in history as the ice storm of 98. It's bad and it is not over. Hundreds of thousands of people in Montreal and across Quebec are still without electricity right now. Things aren't going to get better fast either. More freezing rain said to be on the way. It's freezing rain once again tonight, the second wave of a storm system that has caused chaos since Monday night. More than 100 temporary shelters are open, and at least two deaths are being blamed on the big freeze. Now, with the freezing rain expected to continue right through the night, the big concern here now is that what is already a very dangerous situation could get even worse. Bad news, Dennis. The second part of this ice storm is going to be more vicious than yesterday's uh, for two simple reasons. We're going to see, in some cases, twice as much ice, and winds, which weren't a factor yesterday, will be a factor tonight into tomorrow. The ice storm has been locked in place above the city by a huge area of high pressure in the Atlantic Ocean. This system has brought all of the North American weather systems to a standstill. The normal pattern of west to east weather flow is blocked. Montreal is about to be entombed in ice. I never see so many times a, a long-lasting freezing rain period like we had a Monday into Tuesday. And meteorologists could offer no words of encouragement. The front of warm, wet air coming from the southern U.S. states will last for days. Well, I don't want to be pessimistic, but this is uh, objectively what is the situation going to be. It's not just Canada that's being hampered and hammered by these winds and bad weather. The northeastern United States is also being battered very hard by this storm. Well, the power went off at about 9 o'clock, and then we didn't pay too much attention to it. But we had in the back of our mind the trouble in Canada. They're without power, and this big storm coming with all the ice. What are we going to do? So we started thinking, we got to look up a generator. Up along the Canadian border in the tiny hamlet of Perry's Mills, there's already ice. But at this point, the ice is more spectacle than disaster. This is going to sound awful, but at first it was kind of exciting because you would, you've would you never seen anything like this, and you would run from one window to the next and go, oh, my God, but then it gets terrifying. North of the border, an eerie preview of what's coming. Trees crashing through cars. More than a half million Hydro-Quebec customers in the dark. This is News Channel 5 at 6. By the 6 o'clock news, Tom Messner is starting to sound the alarm. You're going to have a major icing problem. That's what we're thinking about. Waiting for the day's second computer model. 
When I saw that one, I was really concerned because you could see that this was something we hadn't dealt with probably ever. Overnight, trees and poles weighted down with ice will come crashing down, and the number of people without power and without heat will suddenly skyrocket. What started out as a nasty winter storm is becoming a full-fledged natural disaster. It's day three of the ice storm, and everything in Montreal is covered. Over an inch of ice has accumulated as the continuous freezing rain smothers the city. Day three of Quebec's ice storm crisis. More than a million households and businesses across southwestern Quebec mainly are now without power and in many cases heat. The big hit today is on the south shore from Shadowgate and Beauharnois all the way to Boucherville down to Granby. 560,000 plus hydro customers out. What kind of deadline are you holding out for people when things might come back to semblance of normal? Well, I think it would be realistic not to expect power for a few more days. Some people will be out of power until next week. Hydro crews are overwhelmed. The federal government sent in hundreds of Canadian Forces personnel to help out, but nobody can stop this ice storm. And to help get the power back on, Hydro is calling in reinforcements from the United States. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I've never seen sea like this here. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everywhere, trees are breaking, power lines are falling. More and more people are going into the dark. The situation with power outages on the West Island is changing by the hour, forcing some shelters to close. So if you need a place to stay, call your city hall first and find out what's available. The aquatic center in Point Claire will be home to more than 200 people tonight. Residents have to sign up to secure a bed. The shelter is providing food, even entertainment for the kids. It's operating at full capacity, and city officials fear the situation will only get worse. Going into the fourth day, more and more people give up and head for the shelters. With no power, it takes less than 72 hours for the temperature of an unheated house to drop dangerously low. And this is when people are more susceptible to unseen dangers. The brain stops functioning well. You became less able to use your muscles. The feeling of overwhelming tiredness hits, causing you to fall into what could become a deadly sleep. The story is we are stuck with this freezing rain and these ice pellets for at least another 24 hours. By the end of the third day, the storm has taken a firm hold on the city. I hope the worst is over. Me too. But for the people of Montreal, the worst is yet to come. The city becomes mummified as it's wrapped tightly in layers of ice. All forms of transportation start to become immobilized. Street by street, parts of the city are now plunged into darkness. But this ice storm is far from over. You can't go through this room. Grand Isle County is pretty much closed down. The battle against power outages is a losing one. Since last night, the number of people without power in the Champlain Valley has multiplied 10 times. Well, it's not just the trees and the ice and the wires. Now we have flooding occurring. Yeah. The Winooski is running high, but the real concern is along the Osable and the Missisquoi, which is starting to dam up with a mangled mess of trees, branches, and huge chunks of ice. I've lived here all my life, and uh, this is the first time we've ever seen it up this high. I mean, even in the spring when it gets really bad, this is worse than it's ever been. Well, this storm is like a none that we've ever seen here in the Champlain Valley. Um, it is bad in the Champlain Valley, but uh, it is worse than other places. Yeah, they're having a lot of problems, as you probably know by now. North of the border, a million Canadians have no power, and they've been dealing with this ice since Monday now. The freezing rain poured down again all night long. When Quebecers woke up Friday morning, more of them were without electricity than ever, and things were about to get worse. Go! Okay, okay. The signs of another bad day came early this morning. The skies rumbled with thunder and then opened up yet again with freezing rain, the fourth straight day. Day four, the worst day yet. I'm going to cry, I think. I'm very tired. By late tonight, millions of Quebecers will be out of power. Power is still coming in, 
but we do not have any backup anymore, so we are in a fragile situation at this moment. More fragile than we knew. A few days later, the Premier would admit we came close to disaster that Friday. Five lines supply power to Montreal. Only one was still working. While Hydro-Quebec desperately tried to calm fears at this press conference, the power went out. The reality is, by the end of the day, three million Quebecers were still in the dark. The Rouge Mall area is an icy wasteland. The ice is relentless. It covers everything, including the many high-voltage lines that have fallen around here. The city of Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu is trapped in ice, powerless for four days now, damage everywhere. This town is at the heart of the Triangle of Darkness, a region southeast of Montreal where there is virtually no power and no hope of getting any soon. The buildup of ice here is staggering. It's hard to imagine just how much ice they got here around Rougemont. Take a look at this, this bush. Look at the thickness of ice compared to my hand. Getting any supplies to the South Shore was difficult. Late in the afternoon, the bridges closed. Ice was falling from the superstructures. People found out the hard way that Montreal's subway trains run on electricity. For the first time in 30 years, all the metro lines stopped working. In neighborhood after neighborhood, there is simply no electricity, forcing many residents here to evacuate until power can be restored. Utility companies say it could take weeks before repairs are made. Nearly one million homes and three million people are now without electricity. The military has been called out to help. The storm is expected to move out to sea tonight, but forecasters say it will be followed by a major snowstorm. Bill Redeker, ABC News, Montreal. With this severe of an ice storm, the coating of ice that disabled much of the man-made infrastructure also takes a huge toll on nature. A single 50-foot conifer will accumulate as much as 45 tons of ice during a prolonged period of freezing rain. Many trees won't survive this extra weight. As ice starts to glaze on trees and power lines, it doesn't look like it weighs that much. Don't be fooled, it does. Get this, one inch of ice thickness per one foot weighs seven pounds. Not only were they down, they looked like they'd been just exploded. When they hit the ground, they would shatter. I heard a crack, and right as I looked up, that part of the tree was coming down at me, so I dove out of the way. I never screamed so loud in my life. Desolation all over the city. The trees, an ecological disaster for Montreal. By the end of day four, Montreal is weary. The sheer weight of the ice from this storm is crushing the remaining cables and utility poles. Forecasters are saying the end may be in sight, but clearly it's been getting worse before it gets better. Much of eastern Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritimes are affected, but nowhere is it bleaker tonight than right here in Montreal. One of the worst places to be in Canada today was downtown Montreal. Till now, it had been almost untouched by the catastrophic blackouts, but tonight, it too was hit. This is the view from Montreal's lookout, a city in the depth of darkness, after the most difficult day of this crisis so far. I figured it's a total blackout because if downtown has no light, there's probably none at all in my area. 1.3 million customers of hydro, that means there are more than 3 million Quebecers who still tonight have no power. These four days have been a constant battle against the force of nature and where it could be weeks before power is restored. Tonight, Montreal is a city marked by great swaths of darkness with the odd island of light. Tom, it has been an incredible evening here on the island of Montreal. With each passing hour, more bad news coming. What's the latest? Well, the big development on the island of Montreal is that one of the two plants that supply water to the millions of people who live here, one of those two plants is down. It is not functioning. One of two main water treatment facilities servicing 15 municipalities has gone down. So on top of all of the misery, the blackout, the cold houses, no heat after, and this has been going on for four days, on top of that, there's a large chunk of the population of Montreal tonight that does not even have water. The situation in this city tonight is really truly desperate. I guess if there's any good news at this moment, it's what's falling in front of you there. It's snow and it's, that means it's not freezing rain, but it also means it's getting colder and that brings with it its own dangers. Tom Kennedy reporting to us tonight from the streets of Montreal. The people of Montreal have been taking everything this storm could throw at them, and they have persevered. 
Well, I think uh, Montrealers, uh, I think they're, they're hardy by nature, and I think that basically they're going to cope with this, and they've coped with other things. At the Weston Hotel on the dark side of Sherbrooke Street, hotel employees guided guests to their rooms and the hotel's restaurant, where a cold buffet and some hot music kept up their spirits. Basically, we want to keep people busy, uh, change their mind, because they're, uh, everyone is fairly stressed. In the shelter I visited today, if I found people in remarkably good spirits, remarkably grateful to and patient with the people who are helping them. Things are bound to get better because right now many are saying they just can't get much worse. Then we lost power for more than half of the province. The ice formed by freezing rain is the toughest ice on Earth. The main reason for that is there, there's very little, very few air bubbles in, in the water droplet. The storm has now laid down a solid pack of ice of over four inches deep, thicker than a sidewalk slab, and just as strong. Once the ice layers reach over four inches deep, their sheer weight threatens every major structure. And there is nothing more important to a city in crisis than the giant steel transmission towers that bring its power. The freezing rain has spread over an area of 70,000 square miles, taking out towers across the entire region. Montreal sits on an island connected to the outside world by bridges and tunnels. It receives its power by highly vulnerable power lines. The city relies almost exclusively on hydroelectric power generated far to the north in James Bay and Labrador. This creates a logistics problem. It takes over $15 billion worth of transmission lines, almost enough to reach once around the world to feed electricity to the power-hungry south. Ultimately, eight main high-voltage transmission lines bring over 20 gigawatts of power to the city. Right now, any power to Montreal will rely on these delicate arteries that are covered in ice. One by one, six of the eight power lines that feed Montreal have collapsed. The last line to the north of the city is groaning under the extreme weight of ice, and one ice-laden line hangs on to the east. Each cable is now carrying weight over 10 times its design load, the equivalent to a person hanging on every 10 feet. Montreal's only remaining lifelines are at the breaking point. Now the giant towers that have held out against the ice face their final test. At the end of the day on last Thursday, we really thought that we might leave Montreal, that we might have a total blackout in the Montreal area. It was something like a disaster. Only one line. The line was watched by all people the whole night. In a last desperate bid to save the only power line left, the energy companies literally take matters into their own hands, smashing it off by hand. A delicate operation to de-ice the line. The strategy? A crew hovering in an armed forces helicopter, dropping logs on the line to knock the ice off. Okay, overshooting, overshooting, overshooting. to maximum. Unconventional, unprecedented, but it worked. As the sun rises, Montreal breathes a collective sigh of relief. The remaining power lines were saved, and much-needed power slowly returns to the city. Don, can you give us the good news we've been waiting for? Ah, Deborah, there is good news tonight. Dear friends at home, we can tell you we can now bring closure to the worst ice storm on record. The changeover has taken place. We've got light flurries falling in the greater Montreal area. As for ice, forget it. The big freeze, the big thaw. Ahead, the long process of recovery and cleaning up. This window of decent weather may be very small. It's supposed to get colder and colder over the next few days. So you can imagine what went on here today, a huge effort to make the most of this opportunity, to get ice off bridges, to clear debris off the streets, most of all, to restore power to the city of Montreal. This was an uneasy calm after the storm. Downtown Montreal, much of it still without power, 
was turned into a massive pedestrian mall. Dozens of streets were closed, too dangerous to pass. Ice, huge chunks of it, continued to rain down from above. Despite the break in the weather, life has not returned to normal, far from it. Montrealers were told not to drink the tap water. That prompted a rush on bottled water. This store was cleaned out. Even one of the proudest symbols of the city, hockey's Montreal Canadiens, couldn't escape the effects of the storm. Their game against New York tonight was postponed. On the first day of relief from the onslaught of ice pellets, there was still shell shock from the ravages of the ice war. This looks like worse than any hurricane I've ever seen. I mean, the West Island, I thought, I thought where we are was pretty bad, but this is, this is incredible. This is devastation. I was in Winnipeg yesterday. It's the first time in my life I wish I stayed in Winnipeg. People start to venture out, inspecting the damage and telling stories of another harrowing night. I can't believe it. This is the first time I've seen it. It's really sad. I feel bad for a lot of these people. You know, it's like a war zone, you know? It's just I can't get over how bad it was. And as the power crews begin to get back up, they also begin to get almost unbelievable estimates about outages. Nearly 200,000 customers out in Vermont and northern New York. More than a half million people. NIMO says, get this, 99% of its customers are without power. That's, that's in the northern an part of New York. That, that's unbelievable. I've never seen an, an ice storm of this nature. Yeah, you go through the, 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 even the main streets, forget about the back streets, and the, uh, you see the trees and the power lines down, and you just realize that this is something that's going to take quite some time to get over. In Kingston, close to 75% of the area remains in the dark. That's because Ontario's hydro's two main lines are down. Mid-morning, an unprecedented step. I am declaring, as of 10 a.m. this morning, a state of emergency in Ottawa Carlton. The scope of this disaster is hard to take in, especially in the area that took the biggest hit, Montreal's South Shore. No one has escaped. Nearly every household, every business is blacked out in a string of cities and towns that have become known as the Triangle of Darkness. You can see what happened right here. Even small wires became like thick, heavy cables of ice. In some of the areas around here, which is just south of Montreal, the whole distribution system has collapsed, and it could take weeks to get it back to normal. We met up with this convoy of linemen who drove to the South Shore all the way from Long Island, New York. They worked for a Connecticut-based power utility, and to our surprise, most were of French-Canadian heritage. I'm originally stands at Quebec. And uh, what's your name, sir? Remy Perrault. Another, another francophone? Yeah, we're working in down uh, New York right now, but we came, down, we came up here to help everybody. CTV's Genevieve Beauchemin and her camera operator were reporting on the storm on the outskirts of Montreal in an area that is particularly hard hit. A hydro tower came crumbling to the ground, buckling under the staggering weight of the ice. The tower brought with it power lines attached to the massive steel structure. The CTV crew was trapped, wires surrounding them on all sides. And you were trapped there for how long? We were trapped there for several hours, actually. There was these massive high-tension wires around us, so we didn't know whether we could move at all. As we've heard, people are dying and collapsing from use of barbecues, propane, and other heaters inside their powerless homes. And they're ignoring warnings about touching wires or cutting trees down. With the power out, it's more a question of not hearing the warning in the first place. 35 people died in this disaster, and half a million people were forced from their homes. In the end, it left $5 billion in damage. Oh. Hi, I'm, I'm home. I have power. Oh, I feel really great to be home. Finally, progress. Emerging from darkness, the lights are coming back on. After what was quite literally the darkest weekend in Montreal's modern history, at last there was light. By daybreak, power was back in the downtown core. Regular business was not. Downtown officials say the roof of the Eaton Centre is in danger of collapsing under pressure from thick ice in Montreal. There had been an early report that the roof had collapsed and 100 people taking shelter in the complex had to evacuate. Electric utility workers from across North America, the Army, and just about anyone who could lend a hand was trying to get the lights back on and clean up the mess. One of the first things to do was to get rid of the tons of ice. There were some unique ways of doing it, like the team of police sharpshooters getting the ice off a communications antenna.
Montreal, most people will have electricity in a day or two. Here on the South Shore, hundreds of thousands of people will stay in the dark for two more weeks. This crew is one of about 10 working in the area of Saint-Hyacinthe, a city with no power for a week. The men are working from 12 to 18 hours a day. The pylons are taking shape quickly. Cable lies waiting to be strung, but it takes time. The lines here will not be up, the foreman says, before next week. And as temperatures plunge to minus 20, a major operation was underway to convince people without power to leave their homes. After about a week or so, eight days, I, I couldn't stay in my apartment anymore because it was way too cold. I realized when I stepped out of, out of the apartment, it was an old four-story building built in the 20s. The hallway was totally dark. I realized that everybody was out of the building. I, I was the last one to leave. As night falls, the temperature drops. Wind chills tonight will hit minus 30, the coldest since this crisis began more than a week ago. Firewood and other supplies are pouring in from other parts of Quebec, Canada, and the United States. Now we're coming out of Richmond, Virginia, and we're bringing the beds and the tents for the people to sleep in. My dispatcher called me and said, well, we've got an emergency. We've got people up there in Canada that's sleeping outside in these beds. And I told him, I said, well, I'll be in. This storm is more than just freezing rain and downed power lines. It's also people coming together to help. <laughs> neighbors helping neighbors. People volunteering for countless hours in shelters. And the kindness of strangers. The guy that came around the corner and hooked me back up to the electricity came in a truck that had a Massachusetts license plate on it. Oh, yeah. And this kid looked like Adonis, he, <laughs> the Greek god of electricity hooking up, you know? I was never happier in my life. And more signs things were getting back to normal. Schools started reopening. Did you enjoy your extended Christmas holiday? Yes! You did? Yes! You enjoyed being yes. home without power? Yes. And everyone had a special story to tell about his or her extra long vacation. Um, I had an oven stove. You so, have an oven stove? Yeah. What's an um, oven stove? I mean a wood stove. A wood stove. In the fridge, some of our things went bad, but we're still okay, and my mom now is like going for groceries today. You wonder exactly how we survived that devastating ice storm of 98? Just look to your neighbors. Everybody was in it together. You were without power, so were 20,000 other people right around us, and didn't have it any worse than anybody else. But you helped your neighbor, and your neighbor helped you. Adversity, somehow, has brought out the best in people. I think it's everybody's working together and enjoying it. It's made people far more human and realize that what we can do for each other. A little laugh therapy to lighten things up. Considering uh, the time that uh, we're all facing right now, it's been very stressful for our family and for a lot of people around here, so it's definitely very uplifting. Show you that people care, you know? They really do care. I, I've actually have been helping out today, so it's, it's given me something to do. Now, could I judge by your accent that you may have never have seen anything like this before? No, we're from England, so... Oh. We've only been here a year, so we're still coping with the Canadian weather, <laughs> let alone this. So. But, well, you only see this once in a lifetime, they say, yes. such as this. Yes, yes. What were some of the lessons learned from this? You mentioned generators. I think a lot more Be people prepared. and farms have generators now. Well, there are probably lessons learned, but it's going to be so long yeah. before something like this happens again, we'll probably have to learn all over again. Mother Nature reminded us that she can still wreak havoc with our high-tech, modern way of life with almost no warning in a way we almost never expected. We also learned that here in Quebec, more people heat with electricity than in just about any other part of the world. But what we should really remember is how much we depended on our friends and our neighbors, on strangers from nearby and from far away. You know, from a meteorologist's point of view, this was certainly the most interesting thing I've ever seen. I mean, it was, it was mind-boggling what was going on. As far as I'm concerned, it's definitely the biggest weather-related thing I've ever covered in my life. And no doubt, most of us who lived through it will never forget the ice storm of 98. 
1997 was said to be the warmest year on record. In fact, since records were kept at all. A lot of folks think that uh, the ice storm in 98 was a once in a lifetime event, but the reality is it will happen again. Milder winters may mean the conditions to create the perfect ice storm could be just around the corner.